what's going on everybody uh, today what we're going to be working on as you can see in the description is we'll be uh, taking this here AR pistol lower and what we will be doing is we're going to be making a few modifications to it the first thing that we're going to be doing is we'll be switching out the pistol tube to a Thordson cheek stock uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the cheek stock this is one of my personal favorites uh, because it is a much better alternative to the traditional buffer tube that we have grown to love and know so well. Um, it is compliant. It is an NFA compliant item, which again is another reason why it drew, uh, drew me to it. Um, it is a cheek stock, so it's a little bit more comfortable, as you can see. Uh, it does have a little bit of a, a saddling system. I believe that these are also battery compartments, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, another thing to note is that it does have QD attachments already uh, molded in there so you can pop your QD sling rings in there if you want to. Uh, another thing I want to make note of is that it does have its own buffer tube. This is very uh, relieving simply because you know you don't have to worry that you know that age-old question well is it mil spec or is it commercial? In this instance it doesn't really matter. Um, it is not a telescopic tube uh, simply because it has to be NFA compliant in, in the state of Arizona an air pistol is not allowed to have an adjustable stock in any way shape or form so it does have a mounting screw port here which again that's utilized to keep it in place so that it is not adjustable in any way um, it fits traditional buffer tubes or uh, buffer kits so if you have a, a normal uh, buffer weight and spring I haven't had any issues or any compatibility issues with anything that uh, anything that I've put it on so far uh, the big tool that we'll be using today, it is an armorer's wrench, basic AR tool. You can pick one up, 20, 25 bucks, depending on um, where you're getting it from. Honestly, you could probably pick one up on Amazon. Don't quote me on that. I'm not even sure if I can say that. But um, one of the good things that I like about it is that it's you, you can utilize it for just about anything. It has these little grooves here. Um, I've used it for um, you know muzzles and things like that. Uh, back here, you have the castle nut wrench to help you get that. A uh, little castle nut off. It also has a nice little hook wrench here, and then it also has barrel nut uh, grooves here for you. So really a universal tool. And another thing, it's heavy enough to to swat somebody with it. So it doubles as a weapon. Another thing that I like. Moving on. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove the buffer, uh, the buffer tube. One of the first things we want to do here is you want to focus on the castle nut. A um, few things to note is that there is the retention spring, the buffer retention spring. Uh, if you pop that off it's going to go shooting out so you want to make sure that as you're removing this um, you don't want to uh, let that fly all over the place so all we need to do here is pop that off first so we can remove the buffer weight and spring there you go and then now we will be moving on to the castle nut so there's again the castle nut fixture here all you do is you hit it on the three prongs give it a light twist and it pops right off then you just kind of screw it off. There you go. Now, one thing you want to make sure you remember as well is that this end plate is holding the takedown pin. Now, this specific AR uh, model or AR setup doesn't have one uh, because we're in the process of getting it operational. So, you know, don't worry, we're not out here uh, utilizing uh, faulty equipment. You know, shooting things that are bound to malfunction. But no, when you pull this off, again, you want to make sure to remember there's a spring here that keeps the reten uh, the takedown pin it'll you know come flying right out so now once you get it far enough you can simply twist it off Oop, sorry almost forgot this I just warned you guys about it now again just gonna hold that down give it a twist now as you're taking it off again you want to make sure that you're mindful of just where this spring is there it goes pull that right out Oop. Now I've had that shoot all over the place on me in my earlier days when I first started off, so again, um, if you want to not repeat my mistakes, just be mindful of that. Comes right off, this is a basic buffer tube. Now this specific end plate, you're probably looking at it like, what the H is going on with that? It just has a little QD uh, sling ring on it. I like having these because options, right? So we have successfully removed it. Which, that would be our new buffer tube. Now, a couple things here. Like I mentioned with this, don't really have to worry too much about if um, you know it's going to fit or not. I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, the first thing we want to do is put the castle nut back on. Again, no worries on the castle nut or whether or not it's going to fit. As you can see, it slides right on and it goes right on there. Boom. 
Next thing, we're going to put our end plate. Now, uh, with this end plate, it doesn't have any uh, QD sling ring or anything like that. Again, because this right here has QD mounts. So, nice little trade off there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to have to kind of finesse this or time this. So the first thing that I like to do is get it nice and seated in there with all the front, or with all of the uh, fixtures on there, just like we need it, as you can see. What's going to happen here is that uh, let me go ahead and show you. There's a lip, as you can see. This little section here is the part that's going to be keeping the spring from shooting off all over the place, and so that it can do its job in retaining the buffer inside the tube. So again, all I'm going to do is just kind of get it started, just kind of. Squeal it in there as you can see there's a hole where the buffer spring or the buffer retention spring goes I'm just going to screw it in there and get it as close as I can so that way I can eliminate as much guesswork as possible bam there we go next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this on in there bam and then I'm just going to time it down there we go Let me clear a little space here Now, one good way to, or one good thing is that it's foolproof. You can literally line it up simply by making sure that this end plate slides right in there. And then we're just going to screw this down until it tightens. We're done with that. Give it a quick jiggle. We'll take our castle nut, righty tighty, lefty loosey, get the three prongs on there just like we did before. Now, I like to do hand tightens, again, just because. Um, you know, I, I'm always changing things out or what have you and, you know, just giving it a good hand tighten is good enough to secure it. I haven't, again, I haven't had any issues of anything's getting loose. Um, you know, just give it, again, a good hand tighten. Make sure that it's snug in there. That way if you need to or if you have a, a later on want to make any other changes or modifications, you can do so. And then this right here slides right on the back. Secures right into place. Now that we have this piece put on there, the next thing that we're going to be doing is we will be securing it on there. Again, there's a, um, a system in place to make sure that this all stays uh, attached so that it's not telescopic, it's not able to adjust while it's in use, and again, this will uh, make sure that you are well within the NFA compliance and able to express your Second Amendment in danger. Uh, it comes with a little plate and as always it does come with the screws necessary to mount it in there now this in particular are these are two screws that have to go in on both sides so it can be a bit of a pain in the ass but with the proper motivation and um, patience you can essentially knock this out in a few seconds let me make sure I don't put it in backwards there we go so we have the sleeve that slides right in there, and then we have the screw itself. Now I just have to find the right Allen wrench to go with it. I believe this is it. Let's see if we have a second one around that we can. Okay, do we have a second one? There's one right here, but I'm not sure if that's it. No, that's, that's a little too big. Well, I'm able to hold it on in there, so I was able to screw it in there, no problem. And the next one here, same thing, we'll just slide the sleeve right in there. And we'll put the screw on this end. Take our nifty little Allen wrench here very thin one and we'll just seat it down as always we like to use a hand tighten and there you go you now have your Thortson cheek stock now don't let the uh, this is one of the few items where the terminology CA compliant 
uh, you know, I know normally, you know, it'll make you cringe, especially out here in Arizona, but in this instance, they actually, uh, I think the CA compliant uh, attempt was actually something that produced a, a very good product. Um, again, with this cheek stock, you are able to abandon the, uh, the typical tube. There's nothing wrong with it. I say that very sarcastically. Um, but again, oops, without my butt, well, you know, sorry about the butter fingers, but essentially putting it all back together is very easy. But you are good to go. All right. So if you have any questions or, you know, um, uh, if you're uh, wondering where you can get this, honestly, you can get this at any uh, website. Um, there are a few that come to mind, but don't really want to say any because I'm not getting paid for it. So. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can post the post the comments below. Um, I, the guy who runs the place, he'll be he'll be the one reaching out. But um, yeah, thanks for uh, taking time to visit us, and we'll catch you on the next video.